welcome everybody. Uh, okay. Everyone here? Cool, right. So we're going to do basic um, uh, laryngoscopy, just going over the, the, the basics of actually doing it. I'm Anthony, this is Todd. I won't get everyone to introduce themselves because we're really sh short of time, as you know. I also want to talk about basic airway anatomy first. So tell me about the tongue. What do you know about the tongue? Sorry? It's a muscle. Yeah, it's a muscle. Yeah, so the tongue is a muscle. So muscles are attached to things, aren't they? So what's the tongue attached to? Mandible. Excellent. So is it the tongue is attached to the mandible. Do you know where on the mandible? Excellent. Fantastic. I think that's the first person who's said junior glossus all day, which is wonderful. Fantastic. So. For, for everyone else, that the tongue has got eight muscles, four intrinsic, four extrinsic. The intrinsic ones allow you to create shapes of the tongue for phonation. The extrinsic ones are attached to things. 80% of the tongue is genia glossus. The genus process of the mandible is on the inside here. Okay? So that's where 80% of the tongue is attached. You sort of know this anyway, because what are the basic airway maneuvers? Jaw thrust and chin lift. What's another word for the jaw? What's another word for the chin? The mandible. Thrust, lift, is all about moving forward. So it's all about moving the jaw forward, the, the mandible forward, sorry, and that moves the tongue forward and opens up the space behind it, doesn't it? Take, lifts it off, okay? Great, so that's good for basic airway maneuvers. Let's talk about laryngoscopy now. We put the laryngoscope blade into the mouth. Where does the tongue go? Depends how you put your blade in. Okay. So you want to ideally put your blade in the right and sweep over to control the tongue. Yep. But if you just ram it down, the tongue is just going to go back and follow your blade. Sure. So if we do it sort of, you know, if we do it so we put the blade into the right, we grab the tongue, where does it go from there? Excellent. It goes here. Does it go over to the left? No, it can't because there's a ramus of the mandible there. It has to go forward into this space here. Okay? And now this explains why if somebody's got retronathia, recessed jaw, the gap here is too small so the tongue can't go anywhere. If there's a big neck, uh, trauma, abscess, if the front of this space here is full of tissue, there's nowhere for the tongue to go. Yeah? So that, that creates a difficulty. <coughs> Let's talk about the poor old larynx. It's been blamed for many years for being anterior. Okay. Get your hand, get one hand, put it on your larynx. How much more anterior do you want it to be? Okay. It's one of the most anterior structures that we've got in our body. It's not that the larynx is anterior, it's because when we're looking down, we are relatively posterior in those difficult situations. So the larynx is not the problem, it's probably the tongue and the submandibular space tissue that is, that is forcing you backwards. So you've got to try and lift that jaw forwards, lift as much things forward as possible. And, of course, pull, push the larynx posteriorly, which is what external laryngeal manipulation actually does. And I'd advise that on being a single person technique to sort of get it, bring it into space. So that's just a bit of a basic airway stuff, just to remind ourselves of where things are and what, and what they're attached to. Any questions on that? And again, I think the, you know, the big importance in this station is that this is our go-to area. This is where we want to, like, it's great to know all your rescue techniques and everything else, but ideally you should be here every time. You should be able to endotracheally intubate, get a definitive airway, you know, stay using the vortex technique, being in the green area. You know, we should know what to do in an emergency. It's so important to play those in the head. But again, what will keep you in the green area, what keeps you good is knowing all the little things, knowing stuff that, you know, using as... Um, um, sorry, as Nick said, you know, using the three blade gives you a little extra mechanical advantage because the torque, you have less torque, it's a shorter distance, you know, knowing the anatomy, where everything's going. So if you have someone who has more unusual anatomy, you, you, you know, you could think it through, it makes sense, it's not, you know what to do, you can say, okay, where's my next step, what am I doing? Um, so usually, you know, again, we're either going to use a regular laryngoscope blade, whether you like a three or a four. If you're going to use a four, I'd say hold it a little lower. Um, and, you know, we all know the technique of pulling away and, you know, knowing the anatomy and everything gets you there. One thing is usually when we have trouble, 
right, our go-to rescue thing will be the bougie. I know you guys talked about in the other room, but just one thing I like to say, sort of just in case with the bougie, sometimes it's easy to get the bougie in, but then when you're advancing the tube over, you get caught up a little bit, right? Sometimes it can be on the epiglottis, sometimes there, and everyone knows like if it hits like that, you know, if we twist it, um, it gets you through. And that's something simple that most people know. You know, we had this nice, um, the Parker one, which has the little curve that sort of eliminates it. But one thing a lot of people don't realize when you twist it, because the curve of the bougie and the curve of the thing, it actually can be hard. And one of the things that makes it hard, it's, I think, from our central line techniques, we never let go, right? I don't know why. But you know, with the bougie, you actually can let go. And it actually makes it much easier if you twist it, although it can move a little and maybe hit you, it's clean. But it's actually much easier to get that torque if you let go of it than if you're holding it solid. You know, especially because when you're at that point, you're a little bit nervous, right? You're, you're, you've gone to some sort of rescue technique. You're almost there. You want the thing to go in, you know? And then, am I going to come off and get a smaller tube? You know, just one of those little things to think about. And it's all the little guys, whether it's just the size, the type, having the little tweaks that can maybe make it successful so you don't end up falling down the vortex. All right, let's practice. You know, these mannequins are really, they look really smooth and simple and all that, but they're actually really, um, they have a very strong, whether, whether it's rubber or whatnot, to do it. So you actually have to do good technique to get good, a good direct view. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna hold it down because it doesn't suction cup. And, Practice using with a bougie. Just really give it a good pull up towards me. You'll get the view. There you go. I'll leave it in there. And then there are different techniques with holding the bougie. Because so, it's so thin, you kind of want to go like that, but it's actually a flimsy grip. So I'd say there you hold it like a blade, or I know, or you know, Tim does it this way. He likes to hold it like that. If you're the type of person to preload, um, which is tricky. I mean, preloading, it's nice. It's always good to be prepared. It requires you opening up the equipment. It makes it a little trickier to curve, but you can do it this way. I like, I've, I have big hands, so I like to hold it like this. I find if I, if I grip it this way, it's just so thin. So it can do it. That's nice. The other thing too is, you know, using a little bit of surge lube or a little lubricant on it makes it just a lot easier to slide it back and forth.